All right, fantastic. Uh, Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to the VCIC info session. Uh, we are excited to see so much interest in this program. Um, it is one of our marquee programs that um, presents opportunity for students who have an interest in pursuing careers in VC. Um, so we will take this time to dive into the details of the competition um and go over any questions that you may have um i encourage anyone who has questions to toss them into the chat um you can do so throughout the session um and we will do our best to address them as we go but please know there will be a dedicated portion for q a um towards the end of this session where we will address um as many of your questions as possible so let's go ahead and get started so welcome again, my name is Nora Mansfield. I'm Assistant Director of VC Programs at the Polsky Center, overseeing everything from VCIC to the VC track of the PE Lab um, to the George Schultz Innovation Fund. Um, I have the pleasure of working alongside Professor Scott Meadow, who has been our VCIC faculty advisor for a number of years um, and guides this program, the coaching of students to advance to various rounds of competition um, and is also um, one of the faculty faculty members who you know oversees a couple of the courses that we find to be quite helpful in preparing teams for VCIC. Um, I have the pleasure of working with EVC co-chair JP Bogan uh, this year. Would love to have him introduce himself really quickly as well. Hey everybody. Um, I've met several of you on the call, but just to refresh, uh, JP, I'm second year at Booth. Uh, I had uh, the great joy of participating in VCIC last year. It's an awesome program um, and we're excited to kind of get you up to speed on it. Um, been in the VC kind of world at Booth since starting last year, currently with Morpheus Ventures, fund out of LA and looking to jump into it full time in the next six to eight months or so. Awesome, thanks JP. So let's go ahead and get into a little bit about the VCIC. Um, the Venture Capital Investment Competition is a day-long investment competition which allows students the opportunity to role play acting as uh, venture capital firms within their student teams and have the opportunity to hear pitches from and interact with uh, real world entrepreneurs that are currently seeking funding. Um, and as such, the student teams have the ability to see pitches from three different startups um, to go through round robin diligence sessions with each of these founders um, to then extend a term sheet to one of the startups to which that their um, venture fund would prefer to extend uh, an investment offer to. These businesses tend to be early stage opportunities and represent uh, a wide range of industries just to make it a little bit more difficult uh, of an exercise for all of our teams and to showcase as well, um, you know, the diversified portfolio companies that might come across your desk should you be a venture investor. So this competition has provided a lot of benefits to students and you can read through some of these quotes from student testimonials, but at a high level, it's an opportunity to take the uh, frameworks that are learned in CI, EFPE, um, and various other courses and apply them to what would be expected in real world application should you work for a venture fund. As such, it provides students with a really incredible opportunity to have had a um, you know, experiential learning opportunity that they can then speak to in interviews, within recruitment, and also gives you a, an interesting litmus test as to whether venture is for you. This exercise kind of takes you through a really high level deal flow, if you will, and seeing presentations from these three companies. It takes you through the frameworks and process that you would experience should you diligence, you know, all three targets, and then narrow in your focus with an investment recommendation uh, the ability to draft a term sheet and for two teams negotiate that term sheet live with the entrepreneurs. Um, so it's a really fabulous opportunity to take some of the coursework application and apply it um, in this simulation uh, setting. So here's an overview of the competition. Um, two days in advance of the competition, our student teams will receive materials from each of the startups to begin your due diligence. These materials will include a, a pitch deck, uh, an executive summary and uh, financials so that you are able to review these three targets and begin to synthesize and diligence these companies to determine 
uh, which you think is most palatable for investment for your team. We then start off the day of competition with uh, orientation sessions for our judges, which are all venture investors themselves in the Chicago ecosystem and various other regions will be represented, especially in this year. Um, there will be a team orientation where we will review the expectations for the competition, um, the rules and address any questions that you might have before diving in. And there will also be an orientation for entrepreneurs. So they are primed to um, pitch their venture to all of the teams participating to know what to expect in diligence conversations, etc. We then start the competition with the entrepreneur pitches in a demo day style format. Um, each of the entrepreneurs will have 10 minutes to um, present their investor pitch um, and there will not be Q&A as that's what we'll dive into in the diligence rotations. Um, so then you will have as a student team the opportunity to participate in Q&A rotations or diligence sessions with each of the companies. Each team has 15 minutes um, to ask questions of the founders, to um, learn more about their venture, and to hopefully address some questions that rose to the surface in your team's diligence prior to competition. There's then a break where all student teams will work together to draft um, their term sheets and have an opportunity to kind of refine any final pieces before that term sheet is submitted to um, our judges. Once the term sheets have been submitted, each team will then meet in a partner meeting with our panel of VC judges, um, which is an opportunity for those judges to ask you questions about the term sheet you extended, the terms included, and rationale for your investment um, recommendation. We then uh, have a deliberations amongst the judges where they select the two teams that move forward to a live negotiation. That negotiation is an opportunity for the teams to address the founder live um, and to um, share the terms that have been presented and potentially negotiate a bit as well um, as to you know, what terms will be agreed upon for this um, mock investment. And following that piece, we have an award ceremony, um, which is an opportunity to honor the team that will be advancing and representing Chicago Booth in subsequent stages of competition. So those subsequent stages of competition are both regionals and globals. And I want to preface this by saying, um, given the circumstances um, with COVID-19, all stages of competition, beginning with the booth competition, will be fully virtual. With that said, should the circumstances with the virus improve such that in-person events are possible, there could be a chance in which either a regional or global competition may migrate to be in person, but that will all be dependent on um, the status of the virus in uh, in-person events at that point. So the booth competition is our opportunity to select the team that will move on and advance in regionals and globals. Um, an eligibility requirement for those who are applying to the booth competition is availability for these next stages of competition being February 26th, the regional competition, which is hosted by Dartmouth, um, and then April 9th and 10th, uh, the Globals competition, which is hosted by UNC um, Chapel Hill. There are monetary prizes for those who advance to and place in these stages of competition. Um, so know that that is a added benefit um, at the finish line. So the VCIC has historically had great success amongst spoof teams. Um, we've gained a reputation for, um, you know, being a, a, a certainly a contender within various uh, stages of competition. In 2016, um, we had two teams advance to win regionals um, and then take second and third place in globals. And as you look through these photos, um, you'll notice if you recognize some of these faces, you know, a couple Booth alum who have continued to have very successful careers in venture themselves. Um, in this picture on the left, in the middle, Alyssa Jaffe is now a partner with Seven Wire Ventures. Juan Muldoon um, is working in venture in Chicago with Invenergy, and then we have Jackie DeMonte with Hyde Park Venture Partners, just to name a few. In 2017, uh, the team competed at regionals and took second place. 
In 2018, um, the team took first place in regionals. Uh, again, a couple individuals shown within this photo are um, successfully working in venture now. Orin Younger on the far left is an example working in San Francisco at GGB. And last year's team um, was able to take first place at regionals and unfortunately due to um, the timing of COVID-19 and the subsequent lockdowns were not able to advance to globals, but we have no doubt that they would have brought home uh, equal success at that stage in the competition. Shout out to JP who you'll see was a part of that team and who will speak a bit more to that experience later in today's session. So the Chicago Booth VCIC is a one of a kind competition that allows for students to have a simulation of real world venture experience. Um, students are able to interact with the founders of real companies to evaluate their real business plans um, and work as venture investors and practice making these investment decisions. Um, we are excited that Booth has had such great success in prior years of competition and have no doubt that that will continue uh, with this year's competition apply as well. Um, but with that said, the booth competition is our ability to select the team, as mentioned previously, who advances to represent Chicago booth um, within the broader um, VCIC uh, competition, both regionally and globally. So timeline, we know uh, the fall quarter is a busy one and it's an opportunity for you to take a look both academically and extracurricularly at your calendars and determine you know, what opportunities you um, are able to go after. So with that, um, let's go over the timeline. Uh, the VCIC application deadline is November 30th, the Monday following the Thanksgiving holiday. Um, that application will be posted to our website by the end of the month, offering you the opportunity in these next few weeks to really go after team building. Um, there is a team building spreadsheet available on the Polsky Center website um, within the VCIC page that you are able to put down your name, um, which booth program you're enrolled in, and a couple additional details about yourself, should you be looking to join a team or should you be looking to complete your team. So please do know that that is a resource to you. Um, beyond that, various groups like EDC, um, you know, getting to know peers through coursework or other opportunities to build out your team. We will then review all of the team applications to extend um, offers to the teams that are moving forward by early December. There will then be a mandatory orientation uh, session. That's the first week of January returning from the winter holiday. And then all teams who are advancing in competition and, and you know, participating within the booth competition will receive the business materials as mentioned previously two days prior to competition. Um, so you'll all be added to a Canvas site where those materials will be released at 5 p.m. Wednesday, January 13th, giving your team that time prior to competition on January 15th um, to work with materials and work as a team in preparation for the competition itself. So eligibility, uh, this program is open to all currently enrolled MBA students at Chicago Booth, inclusive of the full-time, part-time and EMBA programs. Um, unfortunately, students from other uh, universities are not eligible to participate in our competition, um, though if they are enrolled in another MBA program in another region, um, it's almost certain that they have a competition of their own to choose who advances uh, to represent. Teams must have five core team members. Um, and this year only one alternate is allowed to join your team. That alternate will be able to fill in should a team member um, within the core five team members be ill or unable to participate in competition. Um, and that alternate can assist um, on the day of competition only in preparations of term sheets um, and cannot uh, interact with the entrepreneurs or judges. So just know that those five core team members will be the ones actively involved throughout the day. Should your alternate not have to fill in for a core team member, they can be a resource to you to help your team as you're drafting term sheets um, and can observe um, to kind of take notes and um, help your team you know, improve. 
For regionals and nationals, um, again, the teams must have exactly five members and you are able to bring that alternate, the six students, um, just to act as an observer, similar to how that will be carried out in the booth competition. So to dive into competition rules, I'm gonna uh, toss it over to JP, given that he um, has experienced this firsthand uh, and go, go for it, JP. Awesome. Yeah, so we'll dig into kind of the specifics of the actual day um, over the course of the next, you know, five to 10 slides or so. Um, as Nora alluded to, one of the awesome things about VCIC is you will get the opportunity to work with three real startups. Um, so as a result of that, you will be privy to some information about these very real companies. Uh, we will ask that all teams that participate do sign an NDA. Um, it's very boilerplate, nothing to worry about, um, but it is cool and awesome opportunity to learn a little bit about, um, you know, entrepreneurs uh, doing this for real. Um, as you would uh, day of, as you would do uh, as a real VC, we encourage you to use sources to kind of justify the decisions that you make, uh, especially as it comes down to which company you want to invest in. There is a little bit of a nuance here. So prior to the actual day, um, you're more than welcome to use primary and secondary sources. So uh, my year, we got to speak to, um, I believe it was a gastroenterologist who kind of helped us decide if we wanted to move forward with one investment versus another. Um, and he was a very awesome source for us in uh, helping inform that decision. But on the actual day, uh, you're only allowed to conduct secondary resource, uh, secondary research, I'm sorry. Um, as it has happened in the past, and as it happened to me last year, if for whatever reason we get to the day of and you're participating in the competition and you realize that you know uh, a little too much about a company, whether you know the founder or someone on the team or you've diligenced the company perhaps, you do have to let us know. Um, we wanna make sure it's a level playing field for everyone participating. Um, so if you do have a, a previous connection to the company, just shoot me an, or an email and we'll make sure that gets sorted. Um, if you proceed to regionals, uh, first of all, congratulations. That's awesome. Uh, we hope you do. Um, but secondly, your run with VCIC if you're a first year is likely over because you've already been so successful. We wanna give the chance to other teams to, to do well the following year, but you forever get to, you know, um, right keep your head held high that you went to regionals and hopefully globals this year. Um, and as Nora also alluded to, uh, this year you can have six team members with one person being that alternate. The alternate can uh, help you with things like crafting uh, your initial research, putting together the term sheet that you will ultimately present to your partners and negotiate over. But after that, um, the alternate is effectively uh, on the sidelines kind of observing for the rest of the day. Um, and feel free to substitute those alternates as you see fit. Um, we have had teams in the past with, you know, someone gets sick or something and you need to jump in as an alternate and participate. So the cool thing about the competition itself is it simulates uh, the full life cycle of what a typical investment would go through as a venture investor. Um, and the first part of that day is conducting due diligence on the three companies that we're going to present to you. So uh, you need to understand, you know, what makes these companies nuanced, what makes them tick, what are their revenue cost buckets, et cetera using whatever resources uh, you deem fit. Again, primary research can only be conducted days prior to VCIC, but your goal here is really to build conviction. Um, if you have three companies in front of you, you want to do enough research to decide that one of those three companies is the company that you would want to invest in. Um, and so you have complete flexibility to decide how you get to that conclusion. The term sheet, um, this is a fun part in my mind. Uh, the term sheet is effectively the details of the deal that you'd be offering to the entrepreneur that you want to invest in. Um, your term sheet needs to include, it's a little bit more in depth than um, maybe a typical VC term sheet, but we think this is great practice, especially as you get into the real world for VC. Um, needs to include everything from why you would want to invest in this company, reasons that you might not want to invest in the company, even if you are presenting it as the company you do want to offer a deal to. Um, things like valuation, the size of your investment, all of the deal dynamics that would be at play if you were to truly invest in this company with real money. Um, and then where rubber really hits the road is during the partner meeting uh, where you get to defend that term sheet in front of, we'll probably have eight to 10 judges this year. Um, Nora's already mentioned it, but because <clears throat> given the virtual environment, we're likely going to have judges from both coasts as well as local Chicago VCs. You'll get to defend the decisions that you made uh, and why you want to invest in said company. Everything from why did you choose the company down to why does your deal look this way, why you chose said valuation, the whole nine yards. Um, and it's a, it's a fun little uh, exercise where you get to work with some of the best in the business and they get to treat you as if you remember the team. And um, it's a, it's really good practice, especially for those that want to go into this full time. Uh, the last bit of the day and uh, you know, the, the culmination of VCIC is the live negotiation. So once all teams have gone through uh, defending their term sheets at the partners meeting, two teams will emerge victorious. Um, 
and get to uh, negotiate live on stage with the entrepreneur that they've chosen to invest in. Last year, what that looked like was out one to two people from each team sitting up on stage in front of all the other judging or all the other participants um, and having about a 10 minute conversation with the entrepreneur. The goal here, uh, you want to provide a deal that's favorable both to you as the investor, but also friendly to the entrepreneur. So uh, a nice little exercise in learning how to negotiate a deal live. Awesome. Questions we get a lot. Uh, what makes a strong team? And I got this question as recently as this weekend. Um, the short answer and the first answer is uh, diversity. Uh, you want to have a team comprised of individuals from a bunch of different backgrounds. And I'm not just talking different races. I'm talking about different years of Booth's program. I'm talking different professional backgrounds. I'm talking different booth programs. So uh, evening, weekend, and full time. The more diverse you believe your team is, uh, the better position you're going to be to do well in this com in the competition. So if you have a venture capital background, that's amazing, but maybe you want to also consider someone with a product management background or a consulting background. There's a lot more that goes, that goes into venture capital than just having VC experience. Uh, and you want to make sure your team is reflective of um, kind of the, the breadth of experiences across the booth community. So if you have taken, um, you know, CI or entrepreneurial finance, that's great. If you haven't, it certainly doesn't preclude you from participating. Um, you want to be able to communicate, and I believe this is still part of the application, Nora, um, classes you've taken that have an entrepreneurial skew to them. So if you've taken selling with Alter or new venture strategy or what have you, make sure that's reflected in your application because all of those kind of serve as the foundation for what a typical VC would do in the real world. So is that still yeah. true? That is correct. Yes. Yeah. So an element of the application is listing a subset of booth courses um, and which of your team members have taken them. So again, kind of, um, you know, driving home the encouragement of diversity in our teams down to the level of minutia of coursework that team members have taken. Um, you know, if one or two of your teammates have taken any of these courses, but if you haven't, kind of look to that element as part of your team building as that will only, um, you know, improve in your chances of acceptance and improve in um, kind of the work product that you're able to put forward in competition. Right. And the one thing I'll say, just to answer the question that came in as a ch in the chat, you do as a apply as a team. Um, so we'll get into that shortly here. Um, and then anecdotally, what I will say is, uh, I know we have a lot of first years on the call uh, as a second year Truly, I need to stress the diversity component, particularly from a year and a program standpoint. Uh, it is, we have had all 1Y teams apply in the past, and not that those teams don't get through. It's just that if we have a lot of 1Y teams that are applying, all as, you know, five 1Ys, we can't take all of you. So keep in mind that uh, diversity, again, in that uh, element is also very important. So um, tactically, what the application is going to look like, uh, you can apply at this uh, nice shortened link here, bit.ly slash booth VCIC by October 30th. Um, by November 30th, you also, or I'm sorry, it will be made available on October 30th if you should apply by November 30th. Um, we will need you to send one full electronic copy of the complete application to Nora uh, by November 30th at 10 a.m., uh, we'll get into the specifics of what that application looks like in a second, but just so you have the dates in front of you, October 30th, it's available, November 30th is your deadline. And quickly addressing a question in the chat. Um, we, I would say, so the question is whether it's preferred to have academic background and to kind of hold off until you have some of those courses under your belt prior to applying. Um, to that, I would say that's a personal preference, but what could be a workaround to that is building out a team that if one or two team members have not yet had those courses or are currently enrolled in those courses that you offset that then with a couple team members who have already had exposure to that coursework and as such would bring those frameworks um, and that element of coaching and mentorship to the table within your team structure. Um, so I think, you know, kind of a consideration of exposure to that coursework and those frameworks is important within team building, but know that that can be offset by, again, encouraging diversity of thought, diversity of course exposure, um, functional skills, prior professional experience, et cetera, in um, a strategic approach to team building. Um, so that would be the answer to that one. Cool. Um, so the application itself, we've talked about eligibility a little bit, but all booth students are eligible. Um, you must have five team members at least committed for the core team. Um, you can have six with that one alternate. 
Um, your orientation will be conducted in early January dates. Uh, we, I think Nora mentioned the date at the start, but we'll make sure that's communicated out in all Polsky um, messaging as well as EVC messaging. Um, we'll push it in the Slack channel too, just so that y'all are aware. Um, the competition itself takes place on a Friday, I believe is the 15th, um, Friday yes. in January, awesome. Uh, and it is all day. It goes from about nine to five. Um, so big day, so, uh, soup up on coffee. It's gonna be a lot of fun, but it's also gonna be a lot of work. Um, but it will be, uh, I promise you it will be worth it. For those that do win, you'll move on to regionals. Um, I believe we were in the mountain division last year at the University of Colorado Boulder and competed with uh, six or seven other programs. Um, if we're still in that division, you'll see faces like UC Boulder, you'll see faces like University of Washington and several other programs. Uh, they are very good. So you'll have some good competition in front of you. Um, and then globals will be held in normal virtually, but uh, usually held at UC, UNC Chapel Hill. Um, and those, that team is, is very, very solid given that they founded this program. So uh, get ready. You'll have to submit your resume, obviously, and then you'll pitch your team. Um, so this is kind of the fun part where you get a little bit creative. Uh, you can create your own fund, uh, come up with a cool name. Um, you want to introduce your fund, uh, what your fund's name is, your fund's mission. Do you have any focus, uh, foci, uh, theses, themes, et cetera, that you particularly want to pay attention to? What's the size of your fund? Um, do you know when your latest fund was raised? So when we say vintage, what was the vintage or the year that you raised the last fund and that fund that you're currently investing out of? Um, bite size, uh, I assume that means check size. <laughs> is, that, is that fair game? Okay, cool. Yeah, bite and size. this will have a couple um, elements of criteria that we offer as a framework to build out your team structure, um, just so that everyone is kind of has a couple elements in common and we don't have one team who's a total outlier who, you know, is theoretically, you know, a billion dollars under management. So those, <laughs> those criteria will be provided to you. Yeah. Yeah. And then, but again, get creative with your profiles. I think last year we put together our team name and like all six of us were general partners. Like you don't all have to be general partners. You can be like two GPs, a partner, an analyst, whatever you want, just have fun with the application. It's, it's cool to, to, to craft your own mock fund. And building off of that, I would say as well, um, the elements that we focus most in selection of teams that move forward is your demonstration of an understanding of um, the venture landscape, uh, differentiating yourself as a team based on your investment theses, et cetera. Um, so consider that in your application. There are a couple of areas where it's more fun and creative and others where it's your opportunity to showcase um, your team's um, strategy and approach to the competition. Yeah, that's a, a phenomenal point that uh, I'll just springboard off of as well. So our team last year had, I think, two people that wanted to be consumer investors. We had two fintech investors and two SaaS investors uh, with experience in each of those respective industries. So uh, the broader the industry exposure, I think the better and the more equipped you'll be for the competition day of. Um, in that vein, your competitive advantage, like what do you think you bring to the table as a team of six or a team of five that you think makes you best positioned to be a successful fund and to partner with one of these entrepreneurs? Come up with a track record. You know, if you, uh, in your own professional experience, if you've had venture experience, if you haven't had venture experience, speak to your professional background that you think makes you best equipped to do well in a venture capital investment competition. Uh, like I said and alluded to, if you have product management experience, that's great. If you come from consulting or banking, you know, there are a lot of elements to VC, both financial and non-financial, that can make you well positioned to do well in VCIC. Um, and then as is the big question that I've probably talked to many of you about, why do you want to do this in the first place? Uh, the question you'll get in real life if you do want to go after VC is, why do you want to do venture? So use this as your practice to come up with a very concise and compelling answer for why you want to participate in VCIC and use that as a springboard for your future interviews. Awesome. Um, jumping into strategy and plan, uh, how will you win? What's your plan? What resources will you draw on? Think of this in the context, uh, if you are applying as a mock fund, what are the resources that funds in real life draw on to make them a compelling venture investor to work with? Um, do you have a platform, for example, that helps you with branding and creative, much like Listen Ventures in Chicago? Do you have access to a breadth of operating partners that you think are particularly good at retail software? Get creative to the point that you think, you know, people within your sphere are going to make you a successful fund, um, and that's going to be a compelling piece of the application that you submit. 
Um, again, we're going to be looking to kind of breadth of experience uh, and kind of how you communicate that diversity um, to see if this application is a strong one for DCIC. Goal is we'd love you all to win and then yet have you win regionals and finals. So uh, the stronger the team, the better. Um, and then keep in mind, everyone has, uh, has their own weaknesses, right? So not everyone's perfect. Uh, your fund probably will not be perfect. And we understand that. But we also want you to have a good answer for if you can't fill this hole, where are you going to go to either find the information or find the people or find the resources to fill that gap? Um, so realize there's, there's some hubris in this, um, but also have a contingency plan if you can't, uh, you know, can't back it up in your application. Representative deal. All right. Again, where rubber hits the road and all things VC, uh, we're going to ask you in your application to pitch a real world deal. Um, we're going to get a lot of questions around, you know, does this have to be a company that's currently raising? We're going to get questions around what stage does this company have to be in? Uh, to answer the first question, no. To answer the second question, I would say lean earlier stage. You probably want a company that has uh, at least a product uh, or an MVP and a little bit of traction, even if it's one or two clients. Uh, if it's something that's really pen on paper at this point, uh, probably not a great deal to pitch. Um, but the more information you have on said company, the better, because you're going to need to do some research on everything from the markets that said company operates into, to the team members that comprise the company, to why you think this company is attractive and can be a billion dollar exit. So um, one to two really strong companies that you think make a good venture deal. Um, you can find them on everything from your newsletters that you read every day to we all have access to PitchBook. If you have access to Crunchbase, uh, please give me your login info because I think it's $20,000 a year. Um, and uh, getting into your thesis for why you want to invest, as I mentioned. So um, everything from the compelling side of this deal to the not so compelling side of this deal and uh, what I call kind of the gotta believes that you have to have in place um, if you're going to cut a check. So and no in-depth modeling valuation. Uh, so don't, don't worry about it. We're not going to be making you do a DCF. Don't freak out. There's no like crazy financial stuff that goes on with this. Although if you can, and you really want to prove that a DCF is a viable way to value a business, go for it. Awesome. Thanks, JP. So as we mentioned, the application will be live on the Polsky Center website uh, at the end of this month. Uh, use these next few weeks to build out your team. Um, we've had some times where teams have kind of done mock exercises on their own to prepare for competition. Um, but know that the application will be due on November 30th at 10 a.m. Um, those details will be listed on the Polsky Center website. But given that those additional um, files are required within your application, we ask that you email a submission as well. Um, if you have questions about the competition itself, subsequent stages of competition, et cetera, um, we've listed the national BCIC website, bcic.org. Um, and both myself and JP are available to answer any questions that you may have leading up to the competition. Um, Professor Scott Meadow is certainly a resource, but I would recommend waiting um, until your team has been accepted into competition to reach out for advice and coaching, et cetera, um, as his schedule is quite busy. Um, and I can assure you that any question you have related to competition at this point um, can be answered by both JP and myself. So please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, without further ado, we'll go ahead and transition into Q&A. So go ahead and toss questions um, into the chat and we would be happy to address them. Um, I see we have a question, given the virtual format of competition, if it would be recommended that everyone on the same team be physically together. Um, and unfortunately, that would be that would be ideal. We would love for the teams to be able to work together. Um, but given you know the current state of the virus and the guidelines, um, both from university and city standpoint, we are structuring the competition so that it can be done fully virtually. Um, each team will have breakout rooms that they will be gathered in during the off time so that you're able to really easily work with one another. Um, and you know that will be seamless for everyone involved. So, I would encourage you to, um, just for everyone's health and safety, um, take advantage of you know, being in that remote format and doing it from the comfort of your home and know that we are very um, strategically building out the format of this competition in, in its new form um, to be mindful of providing an opportunity for you to collaborate with your team. One thing, um, can I add one thing there? Of course. I know we're super comfortable working from home at this point, and I'm personally wearing uh, some form of sweatpants, but you're going to have some great exposure to 10 awesome BCs as well. And for those that want to recruit and venture, it doesn't hurt to put a, 
a good foot forward with uh, what you're wearing from maybe the waist up. So. Yes, yes. We, we have no problem if you're wearing sweatpants, but I would echo that statement uh, with dress to impress um, and, you know, potentially making a virtual background or something for your team to have things a bit more polished. Um, but yes, this is an incredible opportunity to connect both with founders and our VC judges. So um, put your best foot forward in that regard. Uh, our next question is um, regarding how many teams usually compete. Um, we will accept six teams to the booth competition. Um, and that is kind of the maximum um, teams that are accepted to that stage of competition. So it's a pretty competitive process from application to competition, um, but we look forward to, to reviewing those. Um, with that, you know, each team has the opportunity to rotate through those diligence sessions with our founders. Um, so do know that there will be a bit of downtime within that Q&A portion where three teams will kind of be on an off rotation. Um, but again, you'll be put into your breakout room so you're able to kind of debrief on the prior discussions, prepare for future discussions, etc. All right. Do we have any other questions? There's light on the Q&A in the chat, but that must mean we were thorough. <laughs> All right, anyone, anyone, Bueller, Bueller, ah, perfect. What industries are represented? Um, that is a great question. Uh, again, we try to provide representation of diverse industries for the startups participating. Um, I'll toss that over to JP as he is um, head of deal flow uh, and we'll be able to speak to that a little bit more. Sure. So we got we had a, a really fun time last year because we got a, an energy startup, a biotech startup, and then a consumer company. Um, so it was really helpful for those of us that had absolutely no exposure to energy and biotech to get quick on it or smart on it very quickly. Um, this year, I think we're going to probably shoot to have, again, a similar level of diversity among the startups themselves. Uh, if I have it my way, uh, and I, you know, it's really contingent upon which entrepreneurs get back, we'll probably have something in the consumer space, in the software space, and maybe in the healthcare space. Um, the broader, the better. And we all understand that you have uh, various backgrounds and interests that can um, make the day pretty compelling from which investments you choose to make. So it's, it's cool to see all entrepreneurs get a term sheet and then have uh, multiple entrepreneurs negotiate day of. So do my best to keep uh, keep companies pretty broad, and and uh, from there on out, it's a surprise. Thanks, JP. Uh, our next question: um, Will teams be provided with a list of everyone who's interested to create a diverse team? Um, so, as mentioned, there is a team building spreadsheet on the VCIC landing page of the Polsky Center website. Uh, I'm happy to provide a link to that when uh, distributing today's recording and slides, so it's easily accessible. Um, but that is kind of your go-to resource uh, for team building to understand, you know, who's interested, who's on board, who's looking to fill out a team, et cetera. Um, so do know that that's a resource available to you. Beyond that, I would imagine there are other um, modes of communication amongst students, Slack, um, you know, within courses, kind of get a feel for who's interested in participating and build out teams that way. Um, but that the team building spreadsheet will be made available to everyone as a resource as well. All right. Well, we will go ahead and give, um, oh, we have one more question. Um, for the two-day period between receiving materials and competition, are there any guidelines of who they can reach out to for primary interviews, or can these primary interviews be conducted with anyone inside your network? Um, yes, the interviews can be conducted, you know, with anyone within your network. With that said, as JP mentioned, when we announce the teams, or excuse me, the startups who are participating in competition and make diligence documents available, it is required that if any team has had, or team member has had prior exposure to a founder in any capacity, um, they must notify us. So we know um, we are aware of that and can make this as even of a playing field for competition as possible. With that said, there may be some circumstances where a student has to recuse themselves from diligence round robins given prior exposure to, um, to a startup or to a founder. Uh, and with that said, you know, the balance of your team will be able to have direct interaction with that particular company um, and you'll have to recuse yourself from that active engagement. Um, we 
as such are not um, able as part of the primary resources, you are not able to reach out to the founders themselves um, or those who are affiliated directly with the company, um, just given the fact that, you know, those founders are preparing their own materials for the competition and, um, you know, that we aren't able to make that available to all student teams and as such, um, that's kind of the one area that's off limits. All right. Well, if there aren't any other questions, we'll go ahead and give this time back to you um, to either prepare for your next class, have a nice stretch, or perhaps start building out your team. Um, but once again, JP and I are available to answer any questions that you may have. Um, and we look forward to reviewing your applications um, in November and, and choosing the teams to advance in competition in January. Um, so a quick plug for additional Polsky workshops. Um, we will also have a building your own term sheet uh, 101 session for teams participating in VCIC in early January. So know that that will be an opportunity for you um, to have exposure to that content. Um, and there is a wide range of um, workshops being offered both through the Polsky Center and EDC um, leading up to competition that will be a really incredible resource to prepare you individually and as a team. Um, so go ahead and check out the Polsky Center website. Our event page uh, has a summary of everything coming in the pipeline um, and we look forward to seeing you on later sessions. Have a great day everyone.